Right, I'm at Todd's and I've got the van in for a few minor things uh, under the warranty at four or five and I'll talk about those a little bit later. But I wanted to look at a few vans while I'm here. Particularly like the look of this one. This is a Swift Contiki 574. Uh, it's on sale for 69,995, so £5 are under £70,000. One careful owner. Those of you who know this van know it was my van. It's now Todd's. So if you are interested in this van, please give Todd's a ring. Please don't ask me because I won't answer any questions on it. It is now Todd's van. Uh, but I am going to have a look around at it. A, because uh, I want to have a nostalgic look. And B, because someone may be interested in it. Yeah. So it's looking nice and shiny. 6.9 plate. 150 brake horsepower engine, 2.3 litre diesel, and you've got water points here. You've got a skirt locker underneath there where you can keep sort of wet stuff and things. There's the electric point, got the Fiat alloy wheels. Uh, this is the locker under the bed. I'm not sure if it's open. Yes, it is. There we go. Have a look in there. There's quite a bit of space in there. Um, and obviously you can get access from outside as well as from under the bed. And in here you've got the toilet and this is an interesting cupboard because uh, it's quite tall we thought it would be useful if you've got golf clubs or that sort of thing but it has got a fold down table that you can drop down you can put things on there so it gives you a bit more space on there the sort of things you could put in there really would be the thermal screen uh, for the front but yeah I tended to keep sort of, you know, toilet accessories and uh, electric leads in there. So a fitted tow bar, bike rack, and twin reversing cameras up there. Locker on this side as well. Difficult to do this one-handed. Okay. Okay. This is a similar size to the other locker here, so plenty of storage in there. Let's see what they've described about it. Got Audi heating. It says there. It says it's, uh, it's uh, Contiki's Swift Swift's flagship motorhome. Contigo Sport is a luxurious 7.7 .7 metre cruiser that two people can sleep and travel safely. So the specs, it's 2.3, like as I said, 1 uh, 150 Euro 6 diesel. Its MTPLM here is 3850. I did have this up plated uh, from 3500 because the payload was very low. That up plating there gives you about 626 kilograms of payload. So it's quite useful payload at that, but you will need a C1 license for it. Just moving around to the side, you've got gas lockers in. Yeah, you've got your gas locker in there. And you've got two six kilogram bottles normally in, live in there. A diesel filler. Let's have a look inside. A fairly short step to get in. Down here, you've got a shoe locker. We tended to keep our shoes in there. That's quite useful. A ha handle that's illuminated. 
have got fly screen. And got a nice bin. Fly screen on the door. And a hydraulic stop on the door. We've also got, before we go in, we've also got a Toule Omnis door awning. Goes all the way across the van and nicely covers the doors and the windows. Right, let's go a bit further in the van. So down here, you've got access to the water tank. That's the fresh water tank there. And there's a little locker thing here. Tenders keep sort of tools in there, but I suppose you could put a safe or something in there. The lounge is a double sofa. The sofa on the driver's side is a little bit longer than the sofa on the passenger side. But that's a two-seater. The other one, the other one will do three seats. Well, you can get fit three people in there. You've got the fold-up table. There, that goes up. And you've got some windows here, both sides. All the lights are dimmable. Uh, but they haven't, the front ones haven't got USBs. I have got USBs on the back ones. I did fit USBs on the back ones. Over here I've got a TV bracket and I've got to be honest, I don't, never thought that was the best place to put a TV bracket in a motome. But uh, it was because the TV point was there. And the newer ones have got the TV bracket over there. But yeah. Here are the cupboards. Got four cupboards in the in the in the lounge. Yeah. These cupboards are a little bit tight on the roof here. That was the first thing we spotted when we got the van. But yeah, you've got cupboards over there. You've got this uh, unit up here with the lights and speakers in it and the sunroof obviously. So wind up sunroof, you've got a little handle there. And it's quite nice the, the roof. Once you get it up quite a big roof. As perhaps you can see. One thing that did put us off was the roof is a bit low if you're a six foot or thereabouts. But we, we managed. Here we go. It's got the dab radio uh, there and controls on the steering wheel and it's got the blinds that pull across and uh, they pull across the front windows as well. Yeah, usual sort of Fiat cab on it to be honest. You've got reading lights either side, one there and one there. So moving into the kitchen, quite a reasonable sink and a fair bit of workspace. It's not the biggest kitchen you'll ever see but then most motorhomes seem to be about this size. Under here you've got, in here you've got a cutlery drawer, normally cutlery would live in there. We've taken that out obviously you've got some shelves and you've got the boiler in here which is a reasonably handy place for it but it does use up a bit of cupboard space I suppose the alternative was putting it under the bed. Cooker is a Thetford uh, with a big electric ring and three gas burners, oven and grill Underneath you've got an area for storage, which is quite, quite useful. Uh, 
above. I've got a microwave in the cupboard. You've got some space for plates and a mug rack in there. You've also got the solar panel controller. Microwave. It is a turntable microwave, I'm afraid, but they hadn't, they hadn't invented those when we got the motor, the turntable-less ones. Up above, you've got a fan, which is very useful in the summer and when you're cooking, obviously. Get a bit of air into the unit. Quite a decent sized fridge. And you've got the freezer compartment up here. And down there. And obviously you would have normally shelves in there. It's automatic energy selection. And that worked really well for us. You do benefit from the, the Swift command panel. You can control all the functions uh, from this panel here. Lighting, power, all those sort of things. So very useful. Let's have a look in the bedroom. So one of the things that attracted us to this van was the twin bed layout. Six foot two and a half long, I think that one is. I think this one here is six foot five long, so quite nice, good size beds. Yeah. Windows either side, obviously. And you've got three lockers either side. These are reasonable size lockers. They are quite good for storing stuff. Three more across there. But what you do have is a great big wardrobe either side above the bed. Plenty of storage in there. And likewise, I think this one is slightly uh, wider, this locker. There's your hanging rail. And lights that come on when you uh, open. Now, you've also got an Avtex Wi-Fi router here. This is the twins, twin SIM model, if I can say it. And uh, that comes fitted. You just need to provide your two SIMs, or you can use one SIM if you want. But yeah, no, good size lockers. TV point is over here. And uh, got a swivel bracket. Tended to leave the... TV on these brackets are quite sturdy those brackets they're quite good on the other side you've got the light switches and a USB point the lights here these ones up here if I can get it to there those lights they're dimmable but they've also got USBs on them so it's quite handy for charging your phone nice big mirror here Have a look at the washroom. One of the favourite things about uh, this van was the big washroom. A lot of floor space in here. Got a big mirror, a little skylight, got some cupboard space at the back of it. Quite a shallow cupboard but quite tall. the back of that you've got access to basically to the outside locker but that's where the freestanding table is stored underneath that you've got the Thetford toilet heated towel rail a smallish sink it's not the biggest sink you'll ever find but it, it works and under that you've got quite a big locker there that was quite useful In here we've got the shower. There's only a single drainer, but we have used this shower quite a lot when we've been on site and off site as well. Yeah. 
No, it's good. The shower's been really good. You've got bifold doors. They're held in place by a magnetic catch and there's a locking mechanism there to hold them in place. Yeah, no, that's good. So what we've got here is a Roller Team 675. It's one of these ones with a great big overcab here, 59,995. So two three plates, so uh, a couple of years old. It's on a Ford. It's got the steel wheels, or wheel trims. It's one of these ones that's got a humongous garage that you can also use as a bedroom, which is really unusual. So it's like double bunk beds in here because you've got obviously a bed above as well. Or if you're not, if you're not taking other people with you, you fold that up and you've got a massive garage. My only thought really would be if you put that bed down, where do you put all the stuff that was in the garage? <laughs> Just a thought. Got triple, no, quadruple bike rack on here. This is obviously aimed at families. Yeah. Got a rear view camera. And access to the massive garage at the back. Obviously you've got the toilet just that side, so I'll see what sort of layout we've got in a minute. An electric point and a Truma vent. But yeah, let's go and have a look at the specs because I think that is quite, quite tall. Yeah, so Roller Team Zafiro 675. It's a six speed manual. It's MTPLM is 3,500 and it's under seven meters long, 6.99. One owner, it's 2.35 wide and 3.2 meters high. Let's have a look inside, we'll see what sort of layout it is. Okay. So we've got a double dinette here with a big table. All these are belted seats, so you can have four passengers plus driver and passenger at the front. Yeah. Okay, and up above, we've got a massive bed in there. Okay. I think this is a wardrobe here, yep. Very big wardrobe here. They hang this base above. Uh, but Ford cab, manual. All these sort of the goodies that Fords come with. All steering wheel controls, all the little places to put all sorts of bits and pieces. You've got the little lockers above. Yeah, do like Fords. I do like the Ford Transit cab anyway. Yeah, so just looking around the lounge, you've got these lockers, they're quite, quite big looking lockers here. Yeah, not a bad size. <laughs> but you've also got masses of space above them as well. So, pity you can't put another locker in there, but you know, I think you've got to think about your payload with something like this. Yeah. Have a look in the kitchen. So you've got a Thetford duplex. Oven grill, got a cooker, does look like it's been used, which is always good to see because it's not nice when people buy motomes and don't use them. Sink, and obviously the window, more lockers above, reasonable size. Lockers below, looks like a fairly big cupboard here, and certainly it's got one of these drawers. That's good, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, that's all right. More lockerage underneath. Yeah, good. A 
I've got the fridge. Can I hold it open? Hanging against the ladder there, but yeah, it looks. It doesn't look that big here, but underneath you've got this extra drawer thing there. That's quite useful for bottles and what have you. Let's have a look in the washroom. There we go. Yeah, toilet's on a, is that on a plinth? I'm not sure. It looks reasonable height. Reasonable looking sink, mirror. Bit of a locker there. Well, that's good because you've got two drain holes there. It's a reasonable size standing area, but you have got quite a bit of wheel arch intrusion there. But it doesn't matter so much if you've got somewhere decent to stand. Got a bit of more hanging space there, so if you're not using the shower, you could put your coats and things in there. Another locker under the sink. Yeah, not a bad washroom. But I think a lot of people obviously. Oh, a lot of people are going to buy this because of the, um, can't get my camera through there, <laughs> because of the big bed here, the two, two beds. I mean, I could see this being used with uh, four people traveling and two people coming to stay, you know, because it is six berth here. Nice reading lights up there. You've got some blinds, no curtain, you've got the Fly screen, fly screen as well. Can't see. I can't see any USBs or anything there. I don't know where the TV point. I mean, the TV is on there, so I suppose you could just about see it uh, from there. And it's got the new Truma uh, screen there. Good to see. Touch panel. So you've got all the mod cons and your TV and main sockets are there. Yeah. Yeah, not quite an interesting van. I would watch your payload though. Just think about your payload. This is only three thousand three five hundred. And if you bring six people's clobber in here, yeah, you'd have to be careful. And I just spotted this Adria in here. 54,995 panel van conversion. Yeah, this is the uh, famous Adria twin. So almost started a revolution for panel van conversions, this van. 18 plate. And uh, the idea of the twin is you've got twin beds and they fold up for more storage space at the back when you're not using the beds. I'll find some lights in here. So even with the beds down, you've still got a fair bit of storage space down there. Got some gas locker, locker here. Yep. Some little cupboards in there. But yeah. And it's a huge bed, it really is enormous. You've got little lockers above, all the way around, three lockers that side, and three lockers that side. Quite a nice skylight. Doors are nicely insulated. So have a look around the other side. And steel wheels. There's your water filling point. Door is obviously on the driver's side, being a continental van. Electric step. 
have a look inside. And we've got two travel seats, and a table, and it's obviously got a fold out bit as well. Nice looking seats. Got an aftermarket Kenwood stereo in there, and this is an automatic. I have to be careful, but I think that is the Robo Shift, <laughs> the uh, Comfort Shift, I think it's called. It's got the Dometic type blinds at the side and the Remis type blinds at the front. It's a bit unusual. You have got a rear view mirror there, so presumably you can see out a little bit. Interesting sort of reading light here, I don't know if that's an aftermarket one. But yeah, it's different. There we go. And you've got a fairly big locker there. Yeah, two burner hob and sink. Can't see an oven in here. Does mean you've got these big, big old drawers here. And another locker up there. TV point there. All right, let's have a look at the fridge. Ah, right. Unusual door there for the fridge. But uh, quite a thin, medium sized fridge. Quite a good size, really, for a panel van. I think it's yeah, it's automatic energy selection. A good thump. Uh, good size locker there. Right, into the washroom. Quite a bit of standard space there. It is, it is a wet room really, isn't it? Reasonable size sink, you can see that doubles up as the shower. There's a big mirror next to it, some shelves above, shower curtain, cover up the, uh, the wooden bits I guess, but yeah, perfectly adequate. And it's not as tiny as some of the wash areas you see. If you can see in there very well, but it looks like some hanging space. More hanging space that side. Yeah, like I say, quite a nice big bed there. Yeah, there's a little flap for the table there. Looks like it's Truma heating. Vent over there, cab seat swivel. Oh, that's good, not bad. 54,000. Seems strange saying that, of course, but that's the price of things today, isn't it? Really, one thing I did notice just before I'm moving on is it's got one of these uh, fronts on the bonnet to protect the bonnet. Looks like someone's cared for this, yeah. Might be worth considering. So that's an Adria twin, 54,995. We spotted this Benimar Milio 202. So I thought I'd have a look at uh, got three campers here. Uh, first one is a VW, 19 plate, it's 36,995. This is a uh, 55995. 